In this video, I'm gonna check back in on the WandaVision spec books and see where they are in the market. And I have the napkin math to prove to you guys that FOMO is something you do not wanna do. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swagglehaas. And in this video, I'm gonna take a look back at the WandaVision spec books to see where they currently are in the market. Now, for those who don't know, a couple weeks ago, I made a video that was analyzing five WandaVision spec books to see what their current prices and values were, and with the intent that I would make this video here today and check back in to see you know, how they moved in the market based on uh, you know, having had the show out for a couple weeks. So uh, you know, I, I have some really, really interesting uh, finds that I wanna share with you in this video today. I'm to go through the numbers and then at the end of the video probably give you my sort of like takeaways uh, as they relate to you know when is a good time to jump on a book or when is a good time to maybe sell a book but before I get into the numbers if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying my content uh, love interacting with you guys uh, do one of those things hit that bell as they say you know and help support the channel all right, with that being said, let us get into this video. And uh, let me start off by saying, you know, this is this is total, total map, napkin math, as I as I mentioned in the you know start of, start of this video here. You know, I'm not like some super uh, analytical genius, okay? So I'm I'm just taking general uh, rough numbers, and you know, just, you know what is basically small sample sizes uh, to, to sort of give us like, you know, just sort, sort of that, you know, overall feel of what has happened here in the market. Uh, so all of this stuff is based on eBay debt, uh, data and I'm doing you know the median values for a lot of things. So again, you know, lots lots of uh, you know room for error, I suppose, in looking at these numbers. But generally speaking, I think this gives us a good overview of how the market has moved, and hopefully you guys find you know helpful uh, for you know other things that you may want to uh, spec on later on down the line. All right, that said, let us take a look at some of the numbers. But uh, and let me give you a little bit of a refresher in case you you forgot uh, what I what books I talked about in the last video. So uh, let's pull up the five books here that uh, I started to analyze that was two weeks ago. And that first book here, uh, I have, you know, you're getting a little bit of a preview, but the first book that I'm gonna analyze and talk about to you here today is Amazing Spider-Man Annual 16. And what is the significance of this? This is the first appearance of Monica Rambeau, uh, Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau. And we already know that Tayona Paris uh, is in WandaVision. She's been this character known as Geraldine. She is uh, known to be uh, Monica Rambeau though. So we're gonna take a look at this book. Additionally, we're gonna take a look at Astonishing X-Men number six. And and this was the first full appearance of the organization Sword. Of course, we see in WandaVision already uh, the Sword logo everywhere. We know that this is like sort of the new shield that is taking place in the MCU. Uh, and then the other books that I had talked about in my last video were Mighty Avengers number one. This is the first appearance of when Monica Rambeau becomes Spectrum. Uh, Fantastic Four 94, this is the first appearance of Agatha Harkness, Catherine Hahn's character. And Young Avengers number one, which is the first appearance of Wiccan and Speed, uh, Vision and Wanda's twin babies. Now, uh, the the data for this, I will talk in brief at the end of the video, these three right here. Uh, for, the, for the brunt of this video, I'm mostly gonna focus on Astonishing X-Men number six and Amazing Spider-Man uh, number 16. And again, these are the ones that I think have had, you know, the most interesting movement uh, that I sort of want to talk about because, you know, with Wicked and Speed, we did see the babies, but it's not like we saw them. So like the numbers for that, like, it, you know, I have a little bit of analysis for you, but, but it's not like we've seen crazy differences in the numbers. Additionally, uh, with the Agatha Harkness book, uh, she has not been called Agatha Harkness. So, uh, you know, I, there is an upward trend of the books and I will get into that later in the video, but, but it's not something that's worth taking a look at. And then Mighty, Mighty Avengers with, with her being called Spectrum. Uh, you know, again, they haven't called her Spectrum. So uh, there is interesting, uh, you know, anec anecdotal data to, to be looked at with that. But uh, for right now, like, you know, the book, uh, I wanna save those books to analyze possibly later, later on, uh, you know, as the weeks uh, continue to unveil. But with these two books, because we know that we have Tayona Paris, Monica Rambeau, in the show right now, and we know that we have uh, Sword. Uh, these are the ones that have had the most interesting movement. So I'm gonna pull up the numbers with you guys, and hopefully you guys can sort of follow along, and uh, let me show you what, what I came up with. All right, so uh, with, again, with Amazing Spider-Man Spider Annual 16, all I did here was pull up these sold items from eBay, and I went through all of the dates, all of the pages, just counted and counted and counted, all the way back up through December, uh, before December uh, 11th, which you can see here, if you guys remember, December, around December 
12 or so was Disney Investor Day. Uh, you know, for the for the sake of the numbers, I actually looked into it. Uh, so I, I put these different sort of benchmarks that I determined, okay, these are good, like interesting things to look at as far as like, okay, we're gonna look at before Disney Investor Day, then we're gonna look at after Disney Investor Day, right? So from that, we can sort of gauge, okay, after trailers are dropped, uh, what is, you know, how does the value of the book change? And then we're gonna, and then we look at one week before the show, which is like when I made this last video, one week before the show, and then I look at one week after the show and then I look at two weeks after the show and then we sort of look at the numbers together all right so uh, enough talking let's get into the numbers here and uh, I'll show you guys what I got okay so starting off with Amazing Spider-Man Annual 16, that of course, is the first appearance of Monica Rambeau. Now, I only picked out a couple small things to show you. Namely, for, for this Annual 16, it, I'm going to analyze a CGC 9.6 because this is the book on eBay that I've actually seen sold consistently. Uh, I would have done a 9.8, but uh, there actually wasn't 9.8 sales in certain windows that I wanted to analyze. So I'm following the 9.6. Additionally, I'm following the median raw number. Now, for those who don't know, the median is just the middle number uh, between all the books that I see. So if you have a book that's uh, was sold at $100 and you have a book that was sold at $1, the median value would be 50. So again, this is just like a general, general uh, way to analyze the market and the numbers. Uh, so I'm going to show you the median raw. Okay, so here we are before in D Disney Investor Day, right? I, I went back, uh, you know, early, you know, November, October, December, and I looked at see to see what the CGC number for a first appearance of Monica Rambeau was, and CGC 9.6 was around the 150 mark. Okay, and then uh, if if we were to look at her median raw book numbers, we're looking at forty dollars. Okay, so we get we get uh, then we get Disney Investor Day, right? Disney Investor Day drops. Everyone's really, really excited. Uh, you know, we see the trailers for WandaVision. Uh, Kevin Feige hypes it all up. And that night, the next week, we see CGC 9.6 selling for 220 and median raws going up to 53. So as far as growth and losses are concerned, that is a 47% increase uh, in growth for the 9.6 uh, in, in effectively one day. And in the median raw, we're seeing a 33% increase in growth. So, you know, again, Disney, before Disney Investor Day, you know, maybe people knew that Teona Paris was cast, right? Maybe there was news that she was cast and the numbers where they were. And then after Disney Investor Day, you know, which I'm effectively, you know, for this sake of this video, I'm, I'm calling the trailer drop, right? Maybe the trailers came out a little bit before Disney Investor Day, but let's say for the sake of pop culture, we drop those trailers, people see Teona Paris in the show and they're like, wow, Monica, Monica Rambeau, she's gonna be play, playing a part. Oh, uh, you know, she's also gonna be in Captain Marvel too, because Feige said so, and, and that, next week we get those new numbers and you can see around 47 percent growth for the cgc and 33 percent growth for the median ross which is you know hey that's pretty pretty large numbers that's pretty big so okay let's move on now let's move on to uh what else uh we see okay so now we go to uh, this this yellow zone, and this is where Swaggle Haas makes his video uh, one week before the show and says, "Hey, hey, pump the brakes, pump the brakes. Let's 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 not uh, let's not do go too crazy here." And then we go one week before the show. So this is this is analyzing uh, what are the sales in that week when I made the video and like leading up to the actual release of the show. And what, what do we see here? We go CGC 9.6 was 220. Now we have a new 9.6, which is 385, guys, 385. And our median raw at 53 goes to a median raw of $94 one week before the show, which means that is a 75% gross from the CGC 9.6 from Disney Investor Day to the CGC 9.6 that is the week before the show. And additionally, median raw 53 to 94, there's a 77% gross. So do you, do you see that guys? Do you, do you guys see like what I'm seeing here? Right before the show, one week before the show, as far as growth is concerned, we're seeing that 75% growth for like, or you know, the CGC and the median raw. It's like, you wanna talk about FOMO. This is, the, you know, this number right here shows what FOMO is. And and I think, you know, right right away, like that, that early conclusion is sort of like, okay, look, one week before the show, like don't let FOMO set in because this is, this is gonna be like some of the peak values that you're gonna have to pay for the book or, or at least the new peak value that you're gonna have to pay for the book. Uh, conversely though, if you're a seller, hey, that one week before the show, you wanna cash in on that FOMO because there are tons and tons of sales going on. And uh, as you see from those numbers, that's a big jump. All right, let's go on now to what happens after that. So 
We're one week before the show. Uh, we have these the 75% growth, 77% growth, okay? And then now we go into one week after the show, right? So we see, uh, you know, maybe we see Geraldine in an episode, right? We saw her, we actually saw Tayona Paris. Now, what is the growth here? Still an increase. We go from 385 to $400, so still a $15 increase. And a median raw goes from 94 to 111. So what are the growth here? The margins is 4% for the CGC and 18% for the median raw. So, uh, you know, again, Again, show is, show is now out, uh, cat's out of the bag, people know that Captain Marvel is in there or Toyota Paris is in there, and we're still seeing growth. There are still people that want to hop on this train. So once the show is out, this is what I've determined is sort of, this is the peak of in terms of the numbers. It's not the biggest growth, it's not the biggest spike, but it's still increasing, and this is now, we are at the top of the mountain here. All right, now let's go on to week number two, and this is something that's really, really interesting that I saw. Uh, here we are in week number two, and what happens? There is a correction. This, the CGC 9.6 goes from 400 to 320 per, $320, ma making it a 20% drop-off after the second week of the show. Median raws that were 111 go down, drop back down to 96, minus 14% drop-off. So kind of like, you know, we're back to that week one uh, number, so to speak. Uh, not not quite so much for the case of the CGC, but certainly for the median raw. So, okay, so what, is, what does that mean in terms of the market? Okay, so, you know, show is about to come out. People are, go, you know, getting that FOMO. People are going ham. You know, they really want this book. Show is out. We're at the peak of the market. You know, everyone is, is after it. And now we go to week two. And I think he's starting to see like either a, a couple things happening. Either there's an influx of inventory, right? Where it's like, everyone is like, wow, like this book is selling like hotcakes. And then all of a sudden you have all these sellers who want to put their books on the market and that inevitably drops the price down. Or you have people who, everyone who wants the book and, and had FOMO bought the book. And now you're starting to see like after week two, you know, people are sort of like, well, the ones that wanted this, they already have it. And there's no longer like that, you know, wanting to, you know, jump on the FOMO bandwagon after that. So you're really starting to see this correction, as you would call it, uh, you know, here in week number two. Granted, there might be a moment in the show where like Teona Paris like puts on the Captain Marvel outfit and she starts flying and she like beats the crap out of Grim Reaper and everyone gets super, super hype. And that might create another spike. But uh, as we are right now in the show, we've sort of had this correction. Now, with that being said, these numbers are still a lot higher than what we saw with Disney Investor Day, like or around that sort of time. So, you know, we're, it's not, you know, we've seen the spikes, but we also have a new floor and the new floor is still significantly higher than uh, what we got with the trade. So that's really, really interesting. All right, uh, let, let's go on now to, you know, Astonishing X-Men number six, just to show you guys like some of those numbers. And, uh, you know, and, and, and I think you're going to see like some similar sort of takeaways. And then and then I'll get into like, you know, my conclusions after that. All right. Uh, let's, so going back in now here, uh, we're going to do the same sort of journey with, of course, Astonishing X-Men number six. This is the first full appearance of S.W.O.R.D., the organization. It is also the first full appearance of Abigail Brand. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Abigail Brand because we haven't seen her in the show, but we do know that sword as an organization is coming. All right, so first full appearance of sword before investor day. What are we looking at? CGC 9.8, $175, median raw around $15. We get Disney investor day drops. Uh, we get a lot of you know trailers, a lot of excitement about the show. What do we see? CGC 9.8, $220, median raw $25. And so what does that mean for growth and loss? We're seeing a 26% increase in CGC 9.8 and a 67% increase in the median raw value. Okay, we get to one week before the show, I make my video. Here we are one week before. Uh, we see CGC 9.8 goes to 230 and median raw goes to 26. So only seeing a 4% gross one week before the show. So that's sort of really interesting, right? And, and you know, I, I can't, I don't know why necessarily that it didn't spike the same sort of way, but it could be because, you know, maybe people didn't quite know about S.W.O.R.D. yet. Like, you know, the, I think the people who are really, really into it knew about S.W.O.R.D. And, and could already tell from like the trailers and reading, you know, Reddit articles and blog posts and things like that. But, you know, leading up to the show, the marketing leading into the show, it wasn't like, you know, we were having these, you know, WandaVision commercials that were like, and here comes S.W.O.R.D. So I think that it was still a secret. And I'll, I'll show you now as we get into 
you know, one week after the show, when we remember at the end of the episode, we got that teaser for sword. Uh, here's what happened to the numbers. So we dig, ba dig back in here. Uh, it's now one week after the, the show, CGC 9.8. $310, median raw $50, which means that is a 35% increase right here in growth after going from one week before to one week after. And for the median raw, $26 to 50 is a 93% increase. So again, once again, like for amazing um, annual 16 with Monica Rambeau, we see these big 70% number increase. Here we see 35 and 93. So the, this, this window here, uh, one week before and one week after is still a bigger jump than what we saw with like trailer hype from Disney Investor Day uh, with one-to-one -one numbers. And but like annual uh, 16, here we see here, two weeks after the show, okay, it's been hype, things are already out, FOMO has set, set in, people wanna buy it. We go from 310 to 303 for 9.8, median raw goes from 50 to 35, so a 2.5% decline for the CGC and a 30% decline, or I guess I can call it correction for the median raw value. So once again, same, uh, similar to uh, you know, uh, the first appearance of Monica Rambeau with this sword book, uh, not just not in the same week, we're seeing that the biggest growth spikes actually come uh, you know, during, you know, one week before the show or one week after the show. So right in that window, that is when FOMO sets in. And that is like the biggest, biggest part of, of when the spike is compared to Disney Investor Day, which is, uh, you know, was still a big spike, but didn't have sort of the same growth. Okay. So what are, what are some of the takeaways that I have here on the, with the numbers? Hopefully you guys were able to follow that and you, and you found it interesting. Well, I think what I see here is that yes, there are times when uh, you know, you're gonna see these big spikes when the trailers drop and maybe you're not gonna catch the bottom, so to speak, uh, with certain sort of, sort of books. But it does say to me that there is still time to jump on a book if you wanna spec on it um, when the trailer comes out. What you don't wanna do is get FOMO and buy the book the week before you know the thing comes out or the week during you know the thing is there. You really that's not the time to buy the book. So what does that mean for shows like you know Falcon, Winter Soldier, or Loki? So let's say that you're out there and you're watching this and you really want to spec on uh, Owen Wilson's Time Variance Authority character Mobius and Mobius, or you want or you want to spec on the Time Variance Authority. Uh, I think from you know. This small sample size, what I'm seeing here is like, yes, granted, those books are a little bit hot right now, but uh, if we follow this this model, what's gonna happen is the one week before the Loki show, those numbers are gonna jump up a big in a big way at once again. And once we start to see the show week to week, they're gonna have this new plateau. So if you're someone out there who wants to spec on those books, uh, I guess I'm here to tell you that there actually is still time to do so. Um, Additionally, uh, once you're in this this world, you know we see there's this 20% correction now here in week two. So uh, you know if you're someone who like really really wants this Monica Rambeau first appearance book, uh, I would suggest to you either you should try to find it in an LCS and find a good deal, um, or you should wait a couple weeks for like the waters to sort of cool down and then, you know, try to find a good deal there. Again, this is just my overall view of the numbers. Uh, you know, these are just median values, you know, and, and you know, certain CGC numbers that I'm seeing. Again, there are a lot of people that snipe amazing deals within this window. You know, this is just the median value. So that's not to say that you can't find something that's like a gem or a good deal out there. Uh, it's just generally speaking, it's going to be a lot harder for you guys. Okay. And then quick takeaways, you know, for the other three books, uh, just, just so you guys know, Young Avengers, uh, I, I see that it's holding really strong at the $150 mark. I've not seen one single copy go for under that. Uh, but again, that's kind of where we were at the beginning um, of, of the show. So you know, it's uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with those numbers as more stuff comes out. Uh, Young uh, Mighty Avengers number one, which is the first Spectrum appearance. Uh, what we're seeing with that one is now I'm seeing it consistently at fifteen to twenty dollars, and there are a lot of sales. It's like consistent sales uh, versus when I looked at it a couple weeks ago, uh, there was like really really sparse um, inventory being moved on eBay, and you know you can see ones that were like eight dollars and. $20. And so it was like, it was all up and down, but there was very, very little inventory. Now we're seeing a lot of inventory and it's like consistently around $15. And then lastly, with Fantastic Four Night 94, Agatha Harkness, anecdotally speaking, just from looking at the numbers, it's a little harder to uh, evaluate that book since the grades are so up and down. But generally speaking, we're seeing a lot more sales 
overall, I'm sure that the median value has gone up by quite a bit um, compared to a few weeks back. Um, but you know, still, still sort of hard to tell because we haven't had Catherine Hahn called Agatha Harkness yet. Anyways, that is all I got for this video. Hopefully you guys found that interesting and hopefully you guys, uh, you know, uh, were able to follow me as I looked at some of the numbers. Uh, again, you know, what I, what I think, you know, we're seeing here is, is pretty obvious to be true. Uh, don't get caught up in FOMO because if you do, you're going to be paying, you know, the maximum value of a book. Anyways, uh, drop me a like or comment, subscribe if you're enjoying my content. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, did you guys jump on any of these books? How, how do you feel about, you know, seeing some of these numbers? I guess, you know, it's, it's just, it's just one of those things where it's like, obviously true, right? Like what, the closer you get to the show, you know, the, the more that there's excitement, the, the higher the numbers are going to go. Um, anyways, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.